I said, Aretha, I don't even know how to tell you this, but you're the greatest singer I've ever heard. You are just incredible. I don't, I think I used all the superlatives right, there were. Right. And she just looked at me and she said, you ain't so bad yourself. Because her Always. background singers were a real integral part Absolutely. of her live and recorded acts. And to the point where she would cuss out sound engineers Absolutely. if the background vocals did not sound correct. Like I, I saw it actually yeah. happen. Do you believe them? Oh. Like you you hear, there is no doubt. You're hearing both of these women recording at times in their lives where they had to fight to take con creative control. Absolutely. Musicians react. Welcome to Professional Musicians React. I'm Ryan Lerman. I'm Jack Conti. And today we will be digging in to two incredible singers. We're gonna be talking about Adele and Aretha. We need to say only their first names. We are alongside two other incredible singers. This is Maya Sykes. Maya has sang with everyone from the Black Eyed Peas, Macy Gray, Joss Stone, Michael Bublé. You guys have both sang with Bublé. Michael Bublé, I did the Christmas record. Paulette McWilliams has sang background for Aretha Franklin, Billy Idol, Celine Dion, Whitney Houston, Luther David Vandross. Bowie, Luther, Luther Vandross, Vandross Quincy, Marvin Gaye. <laughs> We could just do the whole everyone episode. Everyone that's good. Just e everyone that's you've good. Heard Billy Idol, that's David good. Boy. <laughs> the list goes on. Uh, and of course, my best friend Jack Conti, uh, half of the band's Pop Moose and Scary Pockets, CEO of Patreon. And I'm joined also by Ryan Lerman, who's co founder in, in Scary Pockets. And Ryan has also played with everyone from Buble to John Legend to, uh, <sighs> to Ben Folds. And we're also joined by Tim Sonnefeld, who's engineering the session today. Welcome, Tim. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Tim is a Grammy Award winning engineer and has worked with uh, folks like Usher and uh, who else? Pomplamoose. Elvis Costello. Elvis Costello. Stella. Rancid. Tim's worked with everybody. So thank you for joining us, and why don't we jump right in with who is your favorite female vocalist right now? Ooh. And so we're gonna go around the horn. What favorite female favorite vocalist. female vocalist. Right now, right now. Not, right. not of all time, no, just all time. the first one that comes Ooh. to your mind, who have you been digging? Jasmine Sullivan. She's wonderful. Um, right now. She's from Philly. Yeah, oh, she's, she's extraordinary. Philly. She's really um, great. Yeba is also amazing. I mean, I feel like that's a really mean question to ask singers. Of singers, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It just because is. I can't get, even answer. You're gonna get you a see million, what I'm saying? You're gonna I can't a answer. Comments it. from people. If you're gonna you ask say. me my favorite singer, I, I can't even answer that because, because, it's because like they're right male and female. And there's so many that I love. I, I would be, if I said one, I'd feel really like I was slighting the other. Mm -hmm. And there's like ones that you might not yeah. know as well. Exactly. Yeah. My favorite male right now, right now, yeah. Gregory Porter. Uh, All day. Yeah. You Gregory know who I'm really Porter. into recently? Uh, not so recently, I love the past five years, I guess. Um, it's, is it Brittany Howard? Who's yeah. Lisa? Amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh my yeah. wow. Oh, her, yeah. lead, uh, her in concert, yeah. it's awesome, next level. <laughs> also, do you guys know Lizzie McAlpine? Yeah, I don't. Her Sorry, voice is incredible. She's in a real she's cool so way. Yeah. She's 22. She's but that's brilliant. what I'm saying. Like yeah. we could go. This list There's is a lot. Just so we could go lot. on. So why don't we go into Lizzo's the greats? greats yeah. Let's start with Aretha Franklin. Ooh, um, let's start in. Ryan, here. tell us a little bit about "Say a Prayer." Okay, we're gonna listen to "I Say a Little Prayer." Uh, "Say a Little Prayer." This was part of Aretha's sort of reinvigoration with Jerry Wexler, right? Because she had been on Columbia working with John Hammond, I think, and was sort of like, couldn't really find her groove in terms of- She felt of, stuck. She yeah, felt stuck. she did, yeah. And so she went down to Muscle Shoals with Jerry Wexler in Atlantic. She kind of grew into the Aretha that we know of now via this record and this song, I feel like was a big part of that. He said, you know, I've got this great little studio down in, um, 
muscle shows and these cats are, these cats are really greasy. I think that whatever it is she touched, no matter what it was, she was gonna make it great. Yeah. 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 Period. I mean, to me, I mean, of course she grew, but to me, she always had, whatever song she sang, she always had that magic because mm -hmm. she, every song she sang, her soul was in it. Yeah. yeah. Every single song. And so, so, so part of the magic of this too, I think, is that she's playing piano. Mm -hmm. Which is like I feel like she is underappreciated as absolutely as yes. a piano one of the great player. yes. piano players. She really in the game. was, yes, and that she was, was part of yes. what Jerry Wexler did was insist that she utilize that's right. She play piano. So if we, one wanna... one note. Um, it is of note that on this song it is not the Swampers. It's Jerry Jamon on bass and Tommy Coppell. It's a different group. Gotcha. Uh, not the Swampers, but anyway. And also the Sweet Inspirations are singing background. Ooh. Estelle, Sissy, Sylvia. Oh, yeah. Yep, and Myrna, who was a dear friend of mine. Oh, yeah. amazing. I know wow. some, I, I, of course, I sang with Sissy, so. Oh, my God. Well, we've called the right people. Here we go. Okay. Let's listen. Oh. Back in the day when you Woo! actually had to sing the dynamics oh, into man. what you yeah. did Absolutely. when you recorded. Oh, Absolutely. My God. Like, and you had to emulate yes. the feel and give exactly what the lead singer was feeling. Oh my God. Can you guys Killer. walk us through what is happening in the background vocals that make it so amazing? They're emulating and giving you everything because they're bouncing off of Aretha's energy. Mm -hmm. And they're giving you, in part, they're singing all of their parts, but they're emulating exactly the feel that she's trying to put forth. Mm -hmm. And, and you, that's what makes it magical. What's so interesting, too, about it is uh, it works from a narrative perspective, right? The song's called Answer My Prayer. And that's how the whole first part of the song is. But then yeah. when the chorus hits, they switch parts. The backgrounds oh, take yeah. the lead. Yes. And Aretha and answers the backgrounds. And she jumps off of it. But that's, that's right. very Aretha. Aretha that is. always had some way to feature her background singers because her always. background singers were a real integral part Absolutely. of her live and recorded acts, and to the point where she would cuss out sound engineers Absolutely. if the background vocals did not sound correct. Like yes. I, I saw it actually yeah. happen. I toured with her, so I know. And she, yeah. you toured with the with I toured Aretha. with Aretha. Yeah, yes, and, but yes, it yes. was. I mean, correct me if yeah. I'm wrong. No, no, you're she, not wrong. She made sure that there were tonalities in the way that they were mixed. Yeah. Absolutely. So what makes those backgrounds also great from a scientific perspective is the soprano knew exactly how airy to be Absolutely. and the alto knew Sissy. exactly how thick to be Absolutely. to match it. Absolutely. And that's really, really hard Absolutely. because to do that, your vowels have to be almost the same, same as but, hers. but not, um, not the same because yeah. you couldn't go, mm. me! And have it give you give you that airy tone. Yeah. So she, to you get to that air, same yeah. airy tone, she had to go me right me, while right. the other background singer went me. See yeah. how they're different yeah. timbres, yeah. Yeah. Different, different vowels, but they're almost the same, and they had to match in that prism to make it sound so authentically we, unique. And, and every vowel had to be exactly, exactly. the way she formed yes. her vowels mm -hmm. because you have to match. It's like no matter what singer you're singing with, if they some singers don't say a for a, yes. they'll say a. Ah. You have to do it in the background. You have mm. to emulate whatever that is. Background singing is an art, mm -hmm. and you have to do what that is. Luther did the same thing. So, so what are yeah. what are the 
specific vowel tones that Aretha is singing that the that the backgrounds are matching so, so well. Answer my prayer. That's the best prayer. example. You have to give credit to Aretha Franklin because before she started recording, the tessaratura of a female pop vocalist was not that high. The tessaratura in women or the tessaraturo in men refers to the middle range of the voice. So the chest range is the lowest, the tessaratura is the middle, and your higher octave uh, is the falsetto. Oh, they have a break. You right, see where the right, break right, is. Right. Right. So learning, do you see where that break yeah, is? Yeah. Yeah. So learning how to control where the break is so it's no longer audible means that you have to have a very strong larynx and pharyngeal layer. Yeah. Can, you, can yeah. you two do that? Can you switch? And she had a mixed yes. voice. She knew how to mix her chest. That, that, her and, and she changed Just right the game in the mix. for what that... A mixed voice is when your chest voice and your head voice come together and gives you your middle voice. That is a mixed voice. Yeah. So, okay, if I were to show you my audible break. Oh, right? Yeah. To take it wow, out. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So to take it out, I'm going to stretch back a little bit and start a little lower and go a little higher. Mm -hmm. Oh. So yeah, there's no noticeable. Yeah, no intonation. noticeable break. <gasps> no noticeable. So Aretha Franklin was a master at that, and mm -hmm. she put that into her background. Mm -hmm. So when she, she would go from a, a velocity that was really, really fast to really, really soft in one breath, she'd go, I'm in love with you. And then Yeah, her, it's a saying? dynamic thing, too. And then her background singers would do the same. So she would yeah. go, answer my prayer, right, yeah. to be loud. Yeah. And then she'd come back and go, answer my prayer. Yeah, the, so it's the dynamic, vowel goes yeah. And so her background singers would go, answer my prayer. Oh, prayer. yeah, and See it was difference? a dynamic. Answer my prayer. Wait, wait, yeah, wait, yeah. can we listen to that? Yeah, Where yeah, does that happen? Yeah. Is that in the chorus? All through, all towards through the it. End. Towards the end. Okay, yeah. okay. This is my prayer. Answer my prayer. Answer my prayer. Answer my prayer. So yeah. wait, oh Ooh. shit! Oh. Let's cut the song again! <laughs> <laughs> Let's do yeah. the song again! You just again. have to know how to do oh, those man. blends. A blend is when voices come together and the tones and everything sound as if it's one voice. Even though they're harmonizing, it'll sound like one voice because they are blending. Their tone, their timbre, their vibrato is blending. They match one another. That is a blend. Because you are going between your chest and your mm -hmm. falsetto. And your falsetto. And, and, and with the mix right in the middle. You're doing all of that and it can't be... Something audible. that is, yeah, can't be audible or noticeable Wait, so to can, the outside person. Would you the other thing that she, okay, I want you to notice is in the backgrounds, which is why they're so dope, is yeah. they'll go, answer my prayer, baby. They put just a tiny bit of vibrato, vibrato and then take yes. it out. Yeah, oh. and take it out. Do yeah. it without the vibrato. What does so, it sound like? Answer my prayer, baby. That's yeah. vibrato. What they do is they go, answer my prayer, baby. Yeah, yeah. And, and they do it in sync with each other. Yeah. Yeah, Wait, yeah, yeah, let yeah. me hear that. This is my prayer. Right. Baby. Okay, so wait, question, question question about that kind of stuff. When singers are arranging that, when you when you're arranging that and figuring out backgrounds, are you saying like, hey, let's do vibrato on baby? Or are you just matching each other as you're doing it? Like is it sometimes spoken? Sometimes a bit of both. Sometimes a bit of both. Because sometimes this depending on the singers that you have, they automatically know what to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you don't have that singer that doesn't know what to do, you can just basically Teach coach. them and coach coach them. Sometimes they get it and sometimes, sometimes they, they don't. don't. But Aretha singers, the the sweet inspiration. They got it. That's why they became known, like the honeycombs. Yes. Like, like the emotions. emotions yes. They became known because they knew how to blend yeah. like nobody's business. And, and Aretha knew who to hire to do that. And also listen to <clears throat> the the words they chose to accent. Yeah. They chose the specific word that made the phrase cool. Yes. Like what? Answer my prayer, baby. Yes. Yeah. Baby, that does make right. it baby. so cool. It makes yeah. it special. Yeah. She's saying, yeah. answer my prayer, baby. answer my prayer, yeah. Yeah. answer my prayer, answer my prayer, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, baby. So that's yeah. three, there's yeah. three of them. Yeah. That's three background singers. No, there's four. four. Is there four? four? The Sweet Inspirations, and Sissy Houston, Sylvie, Estelle, and Marty Smith. Smith. Yeah. yeah. And the other gotcha. thing that's dope is their unison. Yes. Their unisons almost sound like, like one match, person. Like one person. Like where? Where's an example of where that is? Leave me 
it's in yeah. that one. Believe so it's in the bridge. Me. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, oh. but that, that but, but there's an octave yeah. lower. Yeah. 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 See how they split the part? But it's look at those unisons. So yeah, that that unison, you? yeah, that would have been me. You been Answer the, my prayer. Yeah. That would have been and me. And that's the prayer. hard part. So let's yeah. sing that together. One, my, one, two. Answer my prayer. Oh to make it my work, God. Yeah. 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 That sounds yeah. so yeah. good together. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it makes us sound like we're one, yes. like a shadow. One voice and that that's did why it. that's such a great that's um, a great tool. thing. And but then notice they do it unison on that part, but then when they do that in the second part, it's in harmonies. Yes. So now it's unison. Okay, that's all unison. Now go right there. Second bridge. Harmony. Harmony, right. Harmony. Harmony. First time, all unison. And that's dope vocal arranging. So tell me about it. In your guys' experience, like who who would have done the arranging on this song? Is that them arranging themselves? Is it Aretha giving them parts? I think it's I think it's a combination of both. It's a combination of both because Aretha knew who to hire. Like Elvis Presley used the sweets. Uh, what's his name? Glenn Campbell used the sweets. And dedicate them all to me. They were a group like the emotions, like the honeycomb that you want to use, like Earth, Wind, and Fire used the emotions. They were a group that you just wanted to use on your record because you knew they knew their stuff yeah. and how to make the record happen yeah. with what it is you would give them to sing. They would go amongst themselves and say oh, they knew we who knew this, they we knew, knew that. they knew who, yeah. who was going to take what parts. Right. Just like I automatically automatically know I'm going to mm -hmm. do the bottom yeah. and then maybe some of the middle, and you would automatically know what you know. The, you I was, do. I'm automatically the floater, yeah, so yeah. I'm always assigned no, last. Yeah, yeah. So I have a dramatic soprano mezzo mm -hmm. mezzo soprano mezzo voice. Soprano. Which which means that I have a higher, higher? than average mezzo soprano voice, mm -hmm. but I'm not quite a coloratura. Mm -hmm. So it means. Wait, that what's a coloratura? A, a coloratura is the absolute highest soprano range in operatic music. So it usually means that if a soprano is trained to sing at a high C on a piano, a coloratura is trained to sing a high F or F sharp. The usual benchmarker for coloratura music can be found in scores such as the Magic Flute, where the top note is an F sharp. Yeah. Yeah. But you, but see, see, you trained to yeah. color a tour. Yeah. I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't. I dreamt I could. Is that beyond yeah. your head voice? It a sounds. Bit. Like, it sounds a like bit. it's like yeah. no, because it's not quite into my whistle tone. That's a little, a little far. Right. Wait, yeah. what's a whistle tone? <laughs> right. There's my whistle tone. Oh, that's see, Mario. I dreamt I did that. And then I woke up. No, I don't. I don't but I, my highest I, is an F sharp. Like okay, that's the just, and that's like if I'm like on my game, 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 like game, game, game. Yeah, that happens a lot with me too, with Luther, because he didn't have parts. Well, he had some things with Sissy when she would do certain things, mm. but mostly it was a lot of mid parts mm -hmm. and low parts. And sometimes I was I was singing with the guys, and sometimes I would be with the sopranos or the second sopranos because I do have. The, we do some of those things in my falsetto, but then I'm mostly, yeah. Lose the love they sought to gain in debentures of quality. Down so there. I can tell you from a person who studied her, because like I grew up studying her background. You grew up what, studying Paulette. Of course I did. Yeah. Well, um, I'm a lot what older. Made, <laughs> what made her legendary is her mix. Her mix was really seamless from mm -hmm. low to the chesty part, like to the fullest part of a woman's reign. So mm -hmm. she could really get in there in a way that sopranos couldn't, like mm -hmm. that couldn't give you a fuller tone. But she could go higher than most altos. Let's talk about Adele real quick. What okay. song are we going to listen to, Jack? Uh, we're going to listen to the new one, Easy On Me. Okay. Yeah, that's the new one, right? I think this, so, this yeah. Yeah, that new, is the new one, Easy On Me. This is the return. This is like grown Adele. Adele. Yeah, oh my God, yeah. Adele. Yeah, yeah, yeah. October like Adele. 2021. Yeah. So yeah. it just yes. came out. A couple weeks came, old. She's Adele. I mean, she does She does Adele. I mean, her voice to me, and with her, along with her accent and her conviction, mm. to me is... She does herself authentically. Yeah. So this it's is like you know, hot her, her yeah. voice is like hot cocoa to me. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah. You just like want to wrap up yeah, in like yeah. a blanket. For yeah, me, Adele yeah. has this like 
confidence through vulnerability. She does. I envy that. Yes. Because I don't know that if she were a woman of color, she would be allowed that mm. access to that vulnerability. That's true. Mm -hmm. And I think she's aware of it too. So yes. she makes a point of saying that in a lot of statements, which mm -hmm. I think is pretty cool. Yes, she but does. But mm -hmm. as a person who doesn't necessarily get access to that vulnerability in the same way, right. I just I, it would destroy me. Yeah. yeah I, I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't get the same representation. Mm -hmm. And I don't I think a lot of women of color feel that mm -hmm. way. I feel like that's an avenue we get to express some vulnerability in because mm -hmm. as a woman of color, especially in this business, you can't really display the same kinds of weaknesses. Yeah, and she is so articulate about the things that she's gone through in her life, you know, and how they affect her music. I mean, Oprah even asked her if she had done, if, if she, how, is she gonna, how is she gonna be able to write now that she's happy with who she is, because mm -hmm. a lot of the things came from pain, but she's able to do that. And I understand what you're saying because there are some singers that I know that have that same thing going on, but it's not accepted in the same it way. It wouldn't so be. I, I can totally, totally get what you're saying. That's a beautiful you know? point. Yeah, it really is. It really is. I think she's amazing. She's convicted. She's committed. You know, she doesn't put on, she doesn't seem like a phony at all. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing about Aretha. There was no phoniness right. at all. I think that's Nothing. their parallel. That's, and me, I think yeah. that's why it resonates is that it we're really in does. a world yeah. where fake is fake is fake yeah. and fake is standard. Yeah. Yes. So when something comes through that has even just a hint of authenticity, we just we really just, oh, we grab so onto so it because on to, yes. we need it. <laughs> yes. We really do need it because there's so many singers to me that are just trying to copy each oh, other God. because it's just the popular oh. thing. To God, do. Just make oh my God, as opposed to just really <laughs> digging deep just into who you are totally. and being okay with whether or not it becomes famous or not. Make the point stop. is, I want to just dig deep. Listen, let me stop just. Stop putting dig all these deep. notes yeah. in your damn run. Yeah. Stop it. So stop this is, this it. is yeah. her first. I mean, for some singers, it's all about how many, how many, stop as, it. how many runs can I do? Stop it. Does that make me a that good singer? That is not singer? music and stop it. That does not make you a good singer. That's, Adele doesn't do all those riffs. You know, Aretha did what came natural. She didn't riff all the time. She did it when it meant something to her. And you know, that's and exactly that's why I don't riff all the time when I'm yeah. like gravy. Uh, Nobody yeah. wants their entire meal surrounded, smothered in gravy. You just you want know, the biscuits yeah. smothered in gravy. That's that. Just that's a little, right. dip those biscuits. Yeah. This is Adele's, just a little bit. This is Adele's first single in five yeah. years. This yeah. is produced by wow. Greg by yeah. Greg Kirsten, oh, who's was? one of our favorite uh, producers. He played all the instruments on this song. He yeah. co-wrote it. Yeah. Uh, and and he's playing piano, and I think there's so like a little kick I love drum. This song. Also, kudos that you haven't done yeah. anything in five years and you're still culturally relevant and still Hel uber Hello. famous. Yeah. Thank you. Holy moly. Exactly. Let's listen to it. Here, Here we it go. Is. This piano's badass. Mm -hmm. There ain't no gold mm. in this river. It sounds so much healthier now, too. Been washing my hands in forever. Mm. I know there is hope <laughs> in these waters, but I can't bring myself nice. to swim when I really am okay. drowning in this silence, baby. Let me in. Go here.
personas. Pretty, right? Amazing control. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It just sounds so much healthier and, and, and just and full. fuller, yeah. I love those. What also, mm -hmm. I mean, in operatic or classical terms, mm -hmm. a woman doesn't premiere until she's 30 because that's mm -hmm. when your last vocal change happens. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with Adele, we've listened to all of her vocal changes happen publicly, which is mm -hmm. why she had to have two surgeries. They mm -hmm. beat that child to death vocally, mm -hmm. and she had to learn how to grow. Yeah. And so now that she's, you know, figured out a way to really know what the richness of her tone is because it was yeah. allowed to develop yeah. in, a, in a proper way. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a grown yeah. woman. Yeah, she's embracing it, yeah. you know, and her dynamic is just, ooh. I love, I also ooh. love, I think what makes Adele Adele oh, is, is her accents, like the, yeah. It, it, yeah. it, it, there's a precision to it that has. She does like three yes. notes in one. Yeah, it's, and it's really precise. You know, yeah, just, it's really mm. cool. The way she's combining that, oh, mm -hmm. God. And it's just natural. Mm -hmm. It's just natural. She I also, love that. something, I, I'm not sure what this is, but she she starts the note before the before the note voices. Do you know what I mean? She mm -hmm. says, you hear a little bit of breath and a little bit of air come out of her mouth before mm -hmm. the that's, vocal cords. That's that's the, that's the, and that's also yeah. the addition to technique. Yeah, like, that's listen technique. Listen to yeah. Adele at 15 yeah, yeah. and listen to Adele now. You yeah. can tell she done gone to some vocal she's people. Got, she's <laughs> got more seasoning now. Yeah, she yeah. got some, so got that's some on purpose. on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, it's, but it's it, it's on purpose, but it's not thought out. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's very healthier. much, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a not, healthier choice. It's not a preconceived thing that you think out, this is how I'm going to. When you're singing and you're singing from your gut, you're not thinking about, okay, I want to make sure I do no. that. No. No, it's, it's just there. And technique because is one of so those. Because she's so seasoned. Yeah. Technique know? is one of those things you yeah. ingrain, you ingrain, and then you forget. It's experience. Mm -hmm. You know, technique, you have It's experience. You, yeah. you know? Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. I don't know that we do, first of yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she's, when she's singing this, I'm, what, is how much is she thinking about she's what thinking she's about her doing? Story. She's thinking about she's story. Thinking about she's thinking about story. Story. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So it's just all she's heart, not, yeah. all emotion. All she's Adele. not that's thinking what, about. That's Adele. That's mm -hmm. what makes Adele Adele. That's why when people are that's like, what makes "How a you great gonna write songs singer. now that you're happy?" I'm yeah. like, "Y'all missed the point." Yeah. She writes songs that are emotionally connected. That's right. You can write a good song if you're happy, happy if you're emotionally connected to it. You can write a good song if you're sad and emotionally connected to it. Emotional connection is emotional. Connection. I want right. to go back to what you guys said before talking about Aretha, mm -hmm. which is just like, I think part of what makes Adele and Aretha both so great mm -hmm. is just like, do you believe them? Oh, like you, you hear, there is no doubt. No doubt. There is no doubt when you hear Aretha or Adele that, that the answer right. is yes. Absolutely. And two, I think what people forget about what makes Aretha just one of those just one time things Icon, that we were gonna get like magical. is that yeah. her musicianship matched mm -hmm. that Absolutely. intent. Absolutely. And that's what she has almost e over almost every vocalist oh, is that yeah. her musicianship totally agree. was undeniable. And mm -hmm. that's what made her a cut above the rest. No matter, no matter because I hear people say, well, she got better. She sang great through her whole life. Whole life. Right. Every t every Thing she's saying, no matter where she was in her life, how she approached it, it was authentic. It moved you, yeah, and that's important. You know, I don't. I mean, there are singers that'll get older, and you you think, oh, they've lost it. No, mm -mm. she never did, and she could do she it for did. two and a half she to three could, hours and, and two, every yeah, concert. Exactly, was you had to be exactly. responsible for knowing like four hundred exactly. songs when oh you were on the God. road. Were it was Absolutely. pretty legendary. Absolutely. Paulette, was yes. there anything that you picked up? Any like insight? that you gained from being on the road with her that you wouldn't, on the, wouldn't have gotten if you hadn't been out with her? Absolutely. Her authenticity changed my world because I had, like I said, I had no one in my life or in my in my family, there was no, no one in my family that did any music. Mm. So when I, when I made that decision from a little kid that that's what I wanted to do, I didn't know where I was gonna go from the south side of Chicago, I had no idea. But getting to work with the likes of Aretha Franklin and Quincy Jones and Luther Vandross taught me so much about what I needed to know about 
being real with who I was. Mm -hmm. There was no bullshit, there was no bull stuff allowed. Oh, you can say whatever the there, fuck you want. It was want. not allowed, it was just <laughs> not allowed. And I remember telling Aretha because I was so in awe. I'm standing, I'm singing, I'm, I'm singing background for Aretha Franklin on the road and Arsenio Hall was opening up for us. Wow. You know, and sure I'm singing, and, and, and this was a period of about two months of weekends I did with her. And I remember walking up to her, I was in awe, I was shaking and in awe. And I said to her, I said, Aretha, I said, I don't even know how to tell you this, but you're the greatest singer I've ever heard. You are just incredible. I don't, I think I've used all the superlatives right, that were. Right. And she just looked at me and she said, you ain't so bad yourself. And, I, I'm, and everything that she did, that she did on record, she did on the road. Mm -hmm. She got, would sit down on the piano and sang like, I don't even know how to explain it because she was so brilliant. It was nothing preconceived it was all about what she felt in the moment first of all i never compare singers right. i never do because i think that's ridiculous but there was nobody like her period. at all and there's never going you know? to be and it wasn't even about <laughs> you know a lot of people say well there her range or to me it's not about a range it's not about how many octaves it's about what you do with what you have mm -hmm. look at gladys knight like this. Cause she worked them phone notes. Baby. <laughs> she worked them <laughs> phone notes. Last night has oh, a, man, can, did she to ever. Me, to me, there's not, I mean, she, and here's another woman that to me has her own lane, has her, no one can compare, no one can sing like her. She doesn't sing a lot of notes, but man, what she does with what she has, it makes you want to jump out mm -hmm. of your chair. Yeah. I mean, it moves you in that way. Aretha moved you in that way. When I listen to singers that move me in that way, that's all that matters. Yes. I don't care how much range you have. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't care if you're a collar or tour or any of those things. Yep. What matters to me is if you move me. If right. you yes. move me, you've done something. Because the then point. I believe you. I believe you. Your authenticity is getting to me. I feel that. Oh, that happened to me. Shh. I feel that. And you know you what know? makes Adele such a great artist is yeah. that she can take... This song has what piano, yeah. bass. It's real simple. Yeah. Yeah. It's just four chords and some truth. Right. Yeah. And as long as yes. you show up with your truth, the truth and that's a right. good melody, you make truth. an excellent song. Yep. What makes each of these singers iconic and unique in their own thing as far as technically how they're using their, their instrument? I think one of the most important parallels between the two of them is one that women are still fighting to have. Both of these women, you're hearing both of these women recording at times in their lives where they had to fight to take con creative control. Absolutely. Where they had to fight to have a certain authenticity and Absolutely. autonomy. Absolutely. And that, what we should take away from that is that in 2021, mm -hmm. women are still fighting mm -hmm. for their autonomy mm -hmm. in the same way Absolutely. as they were in the 60s. Absolutely. That's something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you listen to singers like Barbara Streisand and singers like even Celine Dion, when you listen to singers like Aretha, uh, like Gladys or like Anita Baker, they've had to just to prove who they are. You know, they've had to go through so much just to be who they were. So I completely agree with you. I, I completely agree. I mean, it's just to me, the most important thing is that the approach is always to be yourself. And we have to fight just to be who we are, be yeah. ourselves. To be in control of be even just that of, image, that sound. I, I mean, how many times, I can't even tell you how many times I was told, sing it up, sing it up higher, sing it up higher, when I'm a contralto. Yeah. So an alto would sing, da 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 da, but a contralto would sing, ba ba da 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 da. I like to start things really low. Yeah. But I'm singing up, but I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to start there because then I have nowhere to go. Yeah. You know what? It's, yeah. it's, it's so f amazing hearing you talking about singers leaning into who they are. Mm -hmm. A lesson that I feel like I keep learning, like every month I learn this lesson, mm -hmm. is to be my freaking self. Yes. Like I learn that lesson over and over and over well, again. Of course you learn course that you lesson do, yeah. over and over again. We live in a society that tells you new and improved ways to be a to cookie be cutter something. thing. Yes. Yeah. And that shows the mark of beauty, not as actually something that occurs in nature, but what, what you can afford. Yes. The new standard of beauty is really how much you paid for it. Yes. So of course, who wouldn't That's right. struggle 
yeah. with what it would mean to be yourself when every day you're seeing some new presentation of yourself ain't shit. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's brilliant. And, Brilliantly and when I, said. And when I way. think about yeah. my favorite artists, they are people who embraced their true, for yes. utter self and, and just said, for here's who I am. And hey, for it. Yes, I Absolutely. love that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Finally, yes. Okay, we've got mm. a lightning round here. Okay, a couple factoids. Yeah. Um, first one, the, the Easy On Me music video makes reference to what music video? What previous music Hello. video of Adele's? Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. You've seen the music video. I haven't I know, seen well, it. Well, I did. Um, ho- I did a version with um, uh, Postmodern Jukebox, and we oh. tried to bite oh. parts of the Hello video for oh. the last. I see how it is. Okay. All right, I see how it is. <laughs> Postmodern Jukebox. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, who wow. is Adele singing to in Easy on Me? Do you guys know who her the song is? Her kid, easily. Yeah, her baby. Her kid. Yeah, yeah. her kid. Yeah. You can tell. Yeah. That I would line think so. about her boy. That line about I didn't choose. Um, who I was when I got you, mm. I was like, oh yeah, that's motherhood. Oh, yeah, all Because yeah. she became a mom yeah. so young. Yeah. Right, right. That's totally about her kid. And she talks about her. I didn't even read an interview. Yeah. Like, I don't even need verification. Yeah. Yeah, no. I was just like, ooh, but that's I'm saying she talks <gasps> about She Correct. talks about her son. Yeah, that's right. She does. Okay, we got one more question from the from the, our patron. Uh, this is also from Yum. We're gonna take a video question Ooh. and then we'll wrap up the episode here. And Yum, you're the best. Wearing Scary Pockets sweatshirt. Yum. You're amazing, we Yum. Love that. We, we love, love that. it. When I compare these two songs, I notice the timbre of their voices, with Adele being more low frequency energy and Aretha more bite. Can you describe how vocal timbre? influences the listener? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. If you look at where vocal timbre is, you also have to listen to the velocity of pitch and pay attention to the way it was recorded. Mm. So one of the things that you'll hear in older Aretha Franklin songs is they almost sound like they're pitched up a semitone because of yes. the way that they were recorded. Right. They are pitched so up, yeah. it's a little hard to compare timbre in those two yep. because of those two mediums. Absolutely. When you look at, so it's easier to compare timbre by looking at the tessitura of the voice directly. Right. Right. It is true that Aretha Franklin had a higher tessitura, but it had a huskier tone. Mm-hmm. So the easier comparison, if you want to compare two soprano tessituras mm-hmm. vocally, mm-hmm. would be to compare Aretha Franklin to Patti LaBelle. Mm-hmm. Patti LaBelle's tessitura is of an equal uh, yeah. match, but hers yeah. is much brighter and brighter. brassier right. than Aretha Franklin is. Right, so right. if anything, Adele probably studied the huskier timbre yeah, that I Aretha that. Franklin yeah. um, presented, especially going to the high tones, because if you notice Adele's higher tones, Tones, you especially hear them in the latter part of her voice after mm-hmm. she had her second surgery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She had more ease at getting a huskier tone in a higher way. Yeah, that yeah. is such a brilliant yeah. analysis. That was. Yeah. There, there's so much in there. Information. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What? What great points. Yeah. Thank I you. Agree with that. You're yes, actually teaching this stuff yeah. now, right? Yes, yes. I'm actually pursuing. Uh, so I'm studying uh, vocal. Uh, laryngeal development, Mm -hmm. Um, but I studied voice, and Mm -hmm. so I am looking at how to develop your natural three-octave range and how to strengthen the thoracic cavity. A lot of times when singers come to me, they'll have had teachers that say, don't sing with your throat, and I'm like, okay, but all the sound comes from there, so we kind of need to use that. (laughs) It's more that what they're trying to say is don't put strain on your throat throat. Mm. because then your throat can't oscillate and do what it needs. It won't allow the vocal cords to oscillate in the yeah, right way and yeah. do what you need to do. Yep. And I'm a really big advocate for vocal health. I And mm-hmm. I really appreciate Adele for being very candid about her vocal mm-hmm. health. Yes. I incurred a vocal injury um, in 2017. I got altitude-induced pulmonary edema. Mm. And because of the edema, I developed um, two polyps on my um, bilateral polyps. Mm-hmm. And I chose to have them removed, even though I probably could have reduced them with surgery. Mm-hmm. But I remember when I talked about having my vocal surgery, people were like, never talk about this ever. Oh. And then all these vocalists came to me privately and said, I would have been dropped from my record deal if I had said I had vocal surgery, I had this same surgery, wow. da, 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 da. and it, it made me realize yeah. there was a huge hole where singers, first of all, singers are letting themselves get more injured because they're scared of going to doctors yeah. to find out if they have And they're not singing injury. properly either. They're not singing properly. No. They're not encouraged to sing properly. Yeah. You know, I feel really badly for artists out right now because mm-hmm. they're not allowed the proper rest and the mm-hmm. proper mm-hmm. things that you would need to be able to carry that kind of vocal prowess. Yes. 
this. It's so much fun yeah, talking to you yeah, guys. Yeah. I feel like we could talk. It for, could go on forever, but we, we could have to leave three us. More yeah. hours. But we yeah, love you. Yeah. Yes, it's been so brilliant. Me um, meeting you. Oh my God, you're so Are you so kidding? Brilliant. Maya, oh my what, gosh. what else, um, where should people go if they want to hear more Maya? I know you've done stuff with Scary Pockets, but is there something you're working on that you want to tell people about? Or Yeah, I'm finally um, finishing my record, so hopefully it'll be done soon. Mm -hmm. But you know how that goes. I have to I make do. the money and then record the songs. Well, but too, uh, they'll yeah. be on my website, which is mayasykes.com. My name's Funky to spell. It's M-A-I-Y-A, S-Y-K-E-S. I don't think I'm related to Wanda Sykes, but I always claim her as my cousin. <laughs> and Paula, but you have an amazing personality and an incredible voice, incredible instrument. And Mutual really admiration society yeah. right here. Absolutely. And we just yeah. did something for stories together, yes, which I'm very did. excited yeah. about. And you're working on a record. You I am actually, I have an album out now called A Woman's Story. And I am also working on a new album, um, uh, and there's no name for it yet, but I'm also with uh, Kamal Kenyatta, who produces Greg Reporter, who's producing me. Beautiful. Uh, and we, are, we have some incredible songs, and mostly this next record is gonna be me chronicling my life story, my history, uh, by doing some songs. I might even do a Rufus Chaka Khan song, Ooh. maybe. I was told that uh, that might be a good idea, but it'll be completely different than how my sister Shaka does it, because you guys know I started the group Ask Rufus before Shaka, you guys know that. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm, I might be doing uh, one of those songs, uh, but we, I'm gonna be chronicling um, my life, and I'm, I have writers, J uh, Janice Ian wrote a song Oof. just for me. Oh, I love for that. my oh new God. album, she wrote a song for me wow. called uh, Summer in New York. Uh, it's gonna be amazing. Wow. I'm singing uh, Tracy Chapman's song, I'm singing a Joni Mitchell song. I'm singing uh, mostly women write. Uh, Brenda Russell. I, I, I'm singing a song with Brenda. I can't wait to hear yeah, this record. Yeah, so it's going to be. I'm looking forward to this. The next other thing album. you could do is just turn.